Hello everyone, my name is Alan from Technology Moments and today we're here yet again not only to share our experience with you with another smart device, in this case these fantastic three-way smart switches, but also to understand the basics behind the installation of three-way switches. We'll even see how some models as this one will let you combine analog and digital three-way smart switches. For those of you who are new to this topic, three-way switches refer to the very convenient option of being able to turn your lights on or off from two different locations. Typical, for example, for long hallways, stairs, big living rooms, main bedrooms, and more. Four-way switches use the same principle but being able to activate lights from multiple locations. We may make a video about them in the future if you consider it to be helpful. We've seen in the past how we were able to accomplish sort of like a simulation of three-way switches using RF remote activation capable smart switches, which are two very practical as you can locate those remotes wherever you want as they are battery operated. They also look very good. We're gonna use these smart switches from G Home, which by the way use the same app we've used with these smart power strips that we also liked so much and of which we have bought several units. As an advice, we recommend you to try the same brand always if you've had a good experience. Otherwise, you'll end up with so many apps and skills, linking, renaming, or reconfiguring smart devices that may be quite challenging. You might even lose track of which one activates which devices and names in Alexa may also be confusing. Let's start with the basics of three-way switches. If you wish to continue with installation and wiring, you can skip this mini chapter. This would be the easiest way to understand how three-way switches work. In a normal one-switch operated light, this is what you'd have. A circuit that is interrupted by an on-off switch and that's it. You see a line or live wire, a neutral which closes the circuit and a ground for protection. These switches, by the way, from G-Home also may work in these scenarios. In three-way switches, which is why you're watching this video, you'll have two locations, say upstairs and downstairs. They are not on-off switches, but what they are is A and B switches, which means they let current pass through one or other conductor, which for these scenarios are commonly known as travelers. This means in position A, the switch will be choosing traveler 1, and in position B, traveler 2. For example, in this particular on state of your lights, both are going to have to be in a position in which favor traveler B. This means that light will be off every time the position of the switches do not close the circuit. For example, as you can see right here in this graph, switch 1 being in position A and switch 2 being in position B. As you can see, it is a very simple concept. In a more realistic wiring diagram, this is what you would get. Two electric boxes, two locations, say upstairs, downstairs, where you will have the live wire and the travelers reaching that electric box. If you're lucky, this will have different colors. If not, you might end up with something like this that has happened to us many times. In an even more realistic final situation, wiring will be like this, in which it will include a neutral wire, mandatory for this particular model of switch, and an optional ground. As we have discussed many times, there are in the market other options that do not need neutral and use a capacitor for closing the circuit of the smart switch, but in our experience they've been quite troublesome. This can also be very simple if the diagram you get explains it in such a way. The diagram included in the instructions is very good as well as the explanation of the different wiring colors that you may get. However, this is not something that you'll always encounter and you may even get electric boxes where all wires are the same color and you'll have to start by identifying cables before disconnecting. You can do this by using a voltage or hot wire detector as we've seen before in our channel and we'll leave the links in the description. This way you'll avoid connecting a cable where it is not supposed to be connected and you might end up blowing a fuse. In the final scenario, these may be the two options for having the lights on. This one and this is the other one. And these may be the other two switch positions for getting the lights off. This one and this one. One important consideration here. There is one wire that is gonna be involved here that even though reaches the lamp or load, may not always be at the electric box where the smart switch is gonna be located and that is the neutral wire. This neutral wire needed here is only to close the circuit of the smart switch electronics, no more. This neutral wire does not have anything to do with the neutral required for the load. Very different things. We're gonna see more of that in a moment. 
Ground, as you'll see, is optional. It may even work without it, but we encourage you to have it in place. If yours does not even have the neutral, you might even want to consider wiring both neutral and ground from a close-by outlet as you are gonna need them. Right here you can get the ground and right here you can get the neutral. Now let's go to the practice. As we said, we're gonna be using these switches from Jihome. If you're wondering if it will work if you only get one and leave the analog in the other switch location, the answer is yes, which is very practical and that is one of the reasons why I liked so much these switches. Let me show you. Let's take a look at what you get. We were not given these switches. We bought them and we liked them. We strongly recommend you use this particular model. You'll understand why in a moment. You'll get a couple of these units with the face plates, necessary screws and twist wire connectors and insulators. Wiring and setup instructions. First feel is that they are very well made. These are the connectors that as you saw in our wiring diagrams, you'll understand what they are for and why they are labeled this way. If you're not too experienced doing these installations, you can start by laying it all out on top of your desktop and setting up a testing scenario. That way you won't miss anything when implementing. Let's start by doing so based on the wiring diagram that we explained. If I had shown you these connections before, you might have ended up calling someone else to do this for you. But as we started first watching these diagrams, this is gonna be easier for you to understand how to connect. Let's start with the basics. To your lights, fans, or whatever load you're gonna connect to your smart switch, two or three wires will reach there. Neutral, live, and most of the times, a grounding wire. Always present there for security reasons. Then, the live cable may be interrupted by a switch, in this case, two switches. We're gonna connect them here. We first have to install the included screws for the line and travelers. Again, we can install just one or two acting as three-way switches. We intercept the neutral and bring neutral to each one of the devices. The hot wire or line is connected here. In the diagram, those connectors are these two. We also connect the ground to both smart switches and then finally we need to interconnect the two travelers. I label them here for you, Traveler 2 and then Traveler 1. Now we're ready to energize again. Electricity will come from here, switches will choose any of the travelers and reach the load. In this case, this little LED light bulb closing the circuit with the neutral. Before we test and just being connected again, a question that we're being asked a lot is how much they consume just for being on a matter that will be discussed soon in another video. Let's test it. Just connecting to the circuit out of the box, just by pressing each, will activate and switch positions as they should from either place. I decided to link it to the app right here on top of my desktop so I can make sure that they work correctly. After having installed them and created an account through the app, adding them to the system is just a matter of seconds. We just have to select right here Wi-Fi switch. You may need to power cycle the switches so lights start blinking, meaning that they are in pairing mode. You can also choose to just long press the buttons and it'll do the same. If you already have the Alexa skill enabled, it will notify that both switches have been found and that you can now command them through your Echo devices. Let's go for the other one. Most of the times from the smart home hub in Echo Show devices, it'll have a small delay when being activated or directly from the app. As for features, scenes, schedules and more, they offer what any other smart switch does so you don't need to worry about that. Final installation. Either if you choose to do it as we did, connecting it this way on top of your desktop, or if you just watched the video, understood wiring and went directly for the installation, before you continue, make sure that electricity has been cut off to where you're gonna work. You may open up your electric box and check twice. Right here, you may end up finding many different scenarios. If your wiring is not properly color-coded, you should not disconnect anything. Try to identify your wiring and label them accordingly. You may even have to temporarily reconnect electricity with the open box to make sure which is the cable that you're gonna label. As that additional wire we were talking about in many homes is not present, that neutral wire you can wire through existing conduit using a wire fish tape or a wire puller, or you may even use other alternatives to do it outside the walls from a close-by outlet. Just make sure to identify them too. Then connect, close and use. The advantages of pre-configuring on top of your desktop is that this way you already know how it works, you may have already added to your app and linked to your Alexa skill, which is very easy. Once you connect it, you'll be able to command it through your digital assistant. Something that we really liked about this is that each smart switch monitors when circuit is closed, lights on, and reports it that way. This is gonna be particularly useful for those of you who will just install one of these and the other one will remain analog as this one. These analog switches just feature 
a common live wire and a couple travelers, as you can see right here. Even activating the analog switch, it will report the status to the other one and then to the app. This means that you don't need to install both smart switches, but only one of them. It will then let you activate that light from your Alexa-enabled devices. That is one of the reasons why we ended up enjoying using these devices so much. Okay, guys, I really hope that this video helped you understand how to continue implementing smart devices at your home and continue that road to your smart home. Please remember that you incredibly support us by subscribing to our channel and hitting the like button. See you next time.